Okay guys, in this video I'm going to show you the method that I use to create screws uh, in SketchUp. Uh, I know there are many methods that are uh, that you can find on YouTube, uh, but I just want to share uh, the steps that I take uh, and hopefully it will help you. Uh, I'm sure you can probably find better ways, uh, but uh, the one that I use is specifically uh, designed for 3D printing. Uh, uh, and I use uh, an Excel spreadsheet that, uh, that I use as a template that I created uh, to help me achieve this. Okay, so uh, first thing I'd like to do is I change it to meters. I like working with meters because yeah, I run into less trouble creating geometry uh, in SketchUp. Okay, uh, so with this spreadsheet uh, you know, I'll leave the link uh, so that uh, in the description so that you can access the spreadsheet. Uh, there are all these parameters that you can adjust, uh, and I have uh, placed, you know, optimized these parameters so that they're uh, reasonable for 3D printing. Uh, the first thing that you need to do when you come in here in this uh, template is to simply type in uh, the radius of your screw. So I'm going to just write, I need a 10 millimeter radius for my screw. If you leave all the parameters as they are, everything else is simply calculated for you. Well, for example, uh, it will calculate uh, the radius, the inner radius of your, of your nut for your screw, and also the separation of the different helix. So there are four helix that are involved in a screw, uh, which is um, the two helix that comes from the root, Two helix that comes from the crest. Okay, so let's get to it. Um, uh, all right. Okay, so first thing, since I'm going to make uh, a 10 millimeter radius circle, I'm going to just type in 10 here, enter. One thing you want to make sure is the number of sides. Um, I'm going to use 20 sides. You just type in 20s, enter. Okay, uh, the next thing is you make a line from the origin. Uh, I just arbitrarily chose some length. Uh, it doesn't really matter. One thing you need to get is an extension. Uh, which you can download it from Sketchucation and it allows you to make a helix. I'll leave a link in the description below uh, so that you can, uh, you'll know where to get it from. Uh, have your line that you just created selected and click on the helix. Now, uh, the radius, leave it as uh, 10 since uh, that's the radius that I'm working with for my circle. Number of laps, 10. Uh, for I, I don't know what the difference is between radius 1 and 2. I leave them both as 10 uh, since that's the radius I'm working with. Uh, number of laps, 10. Uh, number of sections, this is important. This should match the number of sides for your circle. Uh, the rest of the parameters here, you don't need to touch at this moment. And you can hit OK. Alright, so there it creates your, um, your helix. Okay, so the one parameter that we did not uh, specify is how high the, uh, the 10 uh, helix or the 10 rings that you just created uh, need to be and that will be dictated by uh, the pitch of your screw uh, if you look at the Excel file and look at the picture you can see the pitch is the separation between uh, between uh, one helix so you you know you you start from uh, you know one region on your helix uh, to the next region where it's repeated again and that's your pitch. So the pitch is specified here uh, and it's three millimeters. So that would mean that each of these rings must be three millimeters apart. And if you noticed, um, uh, I created 10 rings here. So if they all need to be three millimeters apart, then the entire length of this spring needs to be 30 millimeters. So it's, you know, basically three times 10. And that's why I chose 10 rings when I was uh, making the helix. So simply use the measure tool, click on the origin, uh, and 
uh, make sure you're on the blue axis and just type in 30 hit enter and it will make you a guide point and at this point you can now click on your helix you can click on the scale tool make sure you grab the central one over here on the top and then snap to that guide point so that's where you want it to be next thing uh, is to simply extrude your circle into an object I wouldn't go past the top here I would leave, leave it somewhere around here all right uh, the next is simple we're uh, simply going to make copies of the helix four copies of this helix and uh, if you look at the Excel sheet it tells you how far apart they need to be you can see helix 1 is 0 which is the one that we just created uh, so you can use the move tool uh, click anywhere on the helix and drag it down make sure you're on the blue axis as you're moving hit tab the control key once to make a copy and look at a glance over at your Excel file and it says 0 0.6 uh, should be the displacement for the second helix so just type in 0 0.6 enter now click on the helix that you just made drag it down again hit control key to make a copy helix number three needs to be 1.1 away 1.1 enter alright the next one do the same thing again blow axis hit the control key and it needs to be 0 0.2 away type in 0 0.2 enter okay so uh, you've made all your helix uh, the next thing you want to do is explode all of them so right click explode 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 okay so now that you have exploded all of them all of these bands must be selectable like that if you didn't already notice this thin band is going to be your crest of your screw and and this wider band here is going to be the root okay so the idea is now you simply shrink uh, this this band for the root down to a certain size and that will simply make your screw but in order to do that you need to figure out how far you need to shrink it and that's where you need to get this other uh, parameter that's calculated for you in the Excel sheet which is the screw uniform scale down length 12.303 uh, something something so what you essentially need to do is click on your protractor uh, click on the center there uh, make sure you follow along uh, an axis and then make uh, another guideline at 45 degrees so this diagonal uh, you will be used uh, for the scaling of the of the root what you'll do here is click on the center and along that guideline you'll type in that number which is 12.303657993 enter okay so there it is all right so we have uh, the the root still selected but we can just simply click on scale uh, have your control button pressed so that you're uniformly scaling uh, do not let go of your control button so I'm pressing it right now and I have it depressed now take your mouse over to one of the diagonal move points uh, click on it uh, and then simply take your mouse over to the guide point until it snaps and click again now let go of your control key and there you have it that's your screw so you can erase the rest of the stuff here you don't need it okay you can erase your guide point if you want uh, you can erase everything okay so let's go ahead and make the let's go ahead and make the nut so I'm just gonna move uh, axis over like that and uh, I'm gonna have to make another circle uh, except that this time uh, the radius has to be what uh, the template tells you so if you look at the template it says the inner radius uh, of the nut needs to be 8.9 and that's calculated based on the parameters specified uh, in, the, in the template so I just simply type in 8.9 
and there you have it. Okay, so you need to make another circle that is larger than this uh, that, uh, that needs to accommodate for the depth of uh, the thread of the screw. So the way you figure that out is uh, if you look at the Excel sheet it says depth of root uh, is about 1.3 millimeters so I'm gonna make it uh, at least 2 millimeters so 8.9 uh, I'll just leave it as 11 round it up there uh, what you want to do is delete the inside area uh, create another line make sure it's on the blue axis the, the Z axis alright there we go now uh, you select uh, your line use the helix uh, helix long curve tool for the radius you type in 8.9 like so 8.9 I'll leave it as 10 laps again because it makes it easier for scaling the helix Make sure this is 20 because you're using 20 sides. If you if you use a circle of 100 sides, then you need, need to you will have to use 100 here. Uh, just hit OK, and there it created again like before. You need to adjust the height here, uh, and uh, we use the same logic as before. If each of these rings need to be separated by three millimeters, and you have 10 rings here, then the total length has to be three times 10, which is 30. So you uh, go over here to your uh, origin along the blue axis, type in 30, enter, select your helix, choose the scale tool, uh, choose the middle scale uh, point here, and then snap it to your guide, and you have the right size. Okay next thing you want to do is to simply increase this I wouldn't go past the top there I'd leave it somewhere there alright and now uh, we're simply making copies of your helix uh, I will select it by my mouse and then do it this way alright now I'm ready to do this we use the same procedure as we did before move it down along the blue axis hit control to make a copy type in 0 0.6 for the second helix enter do the same thing again at 1.1 and yet another one at 0 0.2 enter now we simply explode all of them right click explode right click explode right click explode right click explode all right Again, this is the crest region, this is the band region, and that's what we need to scale. So we'll need to scale outwards since this is a nut. And again, we'll need a dimension to do that. Uh, and that dimension is right here. It says nut uniform scale up length. So we'll need to create that 45 degree diagonal again. So I'll use my protractor, go along one of the axes. In this, in this case, I'm going to use the green and I'm just gonna go 45 degrees type in 45 hit enter and you get that you use your measuring tool click on the origin go along that diagonal make sure it's on that guideline and then type in 14.424978336 I'm sure you know uh, all these numbers are not necessary to type in but I do it anyway so that I can be uh, as exact as I can. Okay, make sure that your uh, root area, band or spiral is selected and simply click on the scale. Uh, and the idea here is uh, same as before, uh, ha have, have the control button pressed in and do not let go and click on uh, click on the middle corner move point here so that you can diametrically scale it click on it and move your mouse over to the guide point until it snaps click again let go of the control key and there you have it uh, you can simply delete these extra um, helix uh, they're not necessary at this point 
Okay, so that's that's it. Um, now I'm going to show you how you can mate uh, mate the two uh, parts together. I'm just going to select all of this and right click and, and group it. Make group. And then I'm going to simply select this and group. And then I'm going to move it. Put it on the origin right there. Okay, so one thing you want to do is make sure the screw is rotated 180 degrees. And in order to do that, you click on this rotate tool. Uh, click about the origin there. I'm going and rotate it 180 degrees. All right. Now I'm gonna go and simply try and hide this area so that I can take a better view and I'm gonna switch to x-ray view and just zoom in and you can see the crest on the screw nicely lines up with the root on your uh, on your nut and that's it that's how you create that's how I create a screw and a nut uh, and the settings again here that I'm using I have found it to be suitable for 3d printing uh, and hopefully it works for you